For all of my fellow reefers who like their tanks chocker block full to the brim with livestock, we know we're going to run into problems at one point or another. Our nutrient levels will go up and we'll try to get them to go back down. Maybe we add GFO to control phosphate or maybe we do a 50% water change every week. Perhaps we've dabbled in bio pellets or carbon dosing to reduce nitrates. If you could set up one piece of equipment that reduces both nitrate and phosphate, keeps algae off the glass and the rock work, increases tank pH, oxygenates the water, and may even replace your protein skimmer? Would you be interested? Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, and today I'm going to teach you how to set up a turf algae scrubber. So what is a turf algae scrubber? A turf algae scrubber uses turf algae to remove or scrub excess nutrients from the water column. In most instances, if your tank has an excess of nitrates and phosphates especially, your nuisance algae will say thank you very kindly and will take over your tank. Oftentimes it will completely cover your rock work and eventually even start Start growing on your stony corals, slowly suffocating and killing them. An algae scrubber is super simple. It's just a box with lights on it, whereby water passes through it and over a screen, which grows algae. Let's look at this clear water algae scrubber as an example. Tank water is pumped in here via the 3 8 inch barbed fitting. Water flows up the side and into the tray. Then gravity pulls the water down through the opening and onto the screen before exiting through the bottom. There are two separate grow lights, one mounted to each side, so that the algae will grow on the screen using the light and the tank nutrients. What ends up happening is the turf algae will outcompete other algae for the available nutrients in the system, meaning that the vast majority of algae that will grow in your tank will be confined to the algae scrubber itself. How many nutrients are actually removed will depend on a lot of factors, such as the size of the algae scrubber, the amount of food and livestock in the tank, how long you leave the scrubber lights on for, and how often you harvest or remove the algae from the scrubber. Would your tank benefit from a scrubber? I would say that the primary reason most hobbyists install a turf algae scrubber is nutrient reduction, specifically nitrates and phosphates. Turf algae grows super fast in a scrubber and is likely more efficient at removing nutrients than either a Cato reactor or a macroalgae refugium. It also takes up less space than a standard macroalgae refugium and depending on your setup, you can just set the algae scrubber on top of the sump itself. I've been running an algae scrubber on my water box frag system for probably six months now because I've been feeding my corals super heavy and I was sick of changing out my GFO every few weeks. With one small algae scrubber, not only have I been able to completely stop with granular ferric oxide, but I've actually had to start dosing phosphate every week because it's so good at uptaking nutrients from the system. And on top of that, I used to get large pH swings every night when the lights turn off, but now I just run the light schedule for my algae scrubber on the opposite schedule from my display tank lights, and it's done a tremendous job of stabilizing that pH level. While it may be true that a macroalgae refugium may be better for breeding copepods, if you don't have a dedicated space for that refugium or you're mainly interested in nitrate and phosphate reduction, then a turf algae scrubber may be for you. There are several different manufacturers that make algae scrubbers and while they all work in a similar fashion, they'll all need to be set up differently so you're going to want to choose the one that is the right size for you and that will fit inside the space you need it to. Today I'm going to swap out my old clear water scrubber for the updated version. This is the Clearwater 50 version 2 scrubber rated for tanks 50 to 100 gallons. My water box frag tank is 100 gallons and my current scrubber, which is the same size mind you, is more than enough for my system. If you're familiar with the old version of the Clearwater scrubber, then you know how it works and how to install it, but you'll also probably know some of its drawbacks. It needed several bulkheads and some plumbing know-how. You had to shut the water flow off every week during cleaning. The screen clips were fragile and sometimes broke. And overall, it was just really bulky once installed. The newly released version 2 is a vast improvement. There is now only a single drain on the bottom. It easily connects to either a manifold or a small utility pump. The screen is super easy to remove and you don't need to turn off the water. It comes with PVC light blockers standard. And since these are actually manufactured by Adaptive Reef, the quality is astounding. Since these version 2's 
drain from the bottom, you will need to mount this above the water level. I'm just gonna drill a hole in this cutting board and set the entire thing on top of my sump, but more to come on that shortly. The Clearwater Algae Scrubber comes with everything you need except for the pump, the flexible tubing, and the ratchet clamps. Since I'm personally installing this off of a manifold, I don't need the pump. But if you do need a pump, the recommended flow rate for this unit is 150 gallons per hour, so the 185 gallon CJ Synchro Silent is almost perfectly sized. If you already have a larger pump, then just pick up this one half inch Two Little Fishies ball valve to turn the flow down a bit. I'm going to use this 3 8 inch interdimension silicone tubing and 1 half inch ratchet clamps to connect the scrubber to my manifold. Installation is super easy and only requires this hand drawn diagram. Well maybe they did it on a computer but still nice work. First we install the bulkhead. Unscrew the lock nut, place the manifold body and gasket through the top and hand tighten the lock nut on the bottom. Remove the two rods from the tray and thread through the screen. Place the screen through the opening in the tray and secure the rods into place. Then place the entire thing into the scrubber body. Wrap the included plumber's tape several times around the threaded elbow, then screw into the scrubber body. Slide both lights into place with the wires facing down. Then insert the two blackout frames on each side to prevent excess light spill from escaping. How you decide to mount your scrubber will completely depend on your setup, but here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm using this OXO cutting board as the base and just placing it in the rear right of my sump on top of the return chamber. I measured where I wanted the opening and used a two inch drill bit to make the hole. I measured and cut one inch PVC to attach to the bulkhead and made sure it was beneath the water line for silent operation. If you're connecting the scrubber to a manifold, just cut the silicone tubing to size and use the ratchet clamps to secure it in place. If you are using a utility pump, do the same thing, except install the Two Little Fishies ball valve as well to control the flow. You want enough flow to keep the tray full of water, but not too much where it flows over the sides. Plug in the lights and let your scrubber do its thing. Until you start getting lush algae growth, leave the lights on 24 hours a day. You don't need to seed your scrubber as turf algae will just magically appear with time. It will likely take several weeks for algae to appear and then maybe several more weeks after that until you start getting a really robust algae growth. If other types of algae appear at first, especially some yellow type algae, don't stress about it. Just scrape it away every week and eventually the turf algae will take over. How often you harvest the turf algae scrubber will depend on your system, but you'll probably be doing it every 7 to 14 days. You can adjust your lighting schedule over time to better control the nutrient uptake. So if 24 hours a day ends up taking up too many nutrients, maybe lower it down to 16 hours a day or 12 hours a day. Personally, I run the clear water scrubber 12 hours a day on the opposite light schedule from my display tank, so it helps keep that pH elevated throughout the night. I highly recommend daily or weekly dosing of Brightwell Aquatics Kato Grow as macroalgae consumes a lot of minor and trace elements from the system. I harvest my skimmer once a week and I get a ton of growth. Here's a clip of how much algae has grown after just three days from the previous harvesting. If a turf algae scrubber just isn't the right fit for your system but you still want nutrient reduction, click here and we'll teach you how to set up a rockin' refugium. And as always everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well! We'll see you next time.